The recently released Martial Shield requires you to collect every exotic weapon and gear piece in Tom Clancy's The Division. With 25 exotic weapons and 6 exotic gear pieces for a total of 31 exotic items, it can be quite a grind for both newer and advanced players to get their hands on all of the exotics. But don't worry, I'm here to make your life a lot easier. We'll take a look at all the exotics, the most efficient way to farm them and their drop chances so you can collect those exotics as soon as possible and get ready for Tom Clancy's Division 2. Out of 31 exotics, you need to collect 30. The one excluded from this list is the Defiler, a level 5 exotic variant of the Sawed Off Shotgun. I will show you how to get it, but for most of you it's probably not that interesting. 6 out of 25 of the exotic weapons can be purchased in the base of operations. The Liberator, Pakan, Centurion, Cassidy and Historian can be bought from the special equipment vendor down in the terminal. One exotic weapon, the Defiler, can be retrieved from the rewards claim vendor in the entrance hall. However, as I mentioned, this weapon isn't part of the 24 exotic weapons you need for the shield. These 6 weapons have been removed from the loot pool, so you don't have to worry about earning them after you buy them. However, that's still a lot to keep track of. So, to help you, there's this site, mydivision.net, provides an overview of every exotic. You can check the boxes of the ones you already have, giving you a quick overview of your collection. The site is linked in the description. The other exotics, both weapons and gear pieces, drop from missions, named enemies, hunters, caches and supply drops. We show you every method from guaranteed to least likely to drop exotics based on the drop percentage. I've taken into account that you play in World Tier 5 since this gives you the highest chance of earning exotics and the drop chances for each of the methods I based on research from a year old reddit post from Bitlilin. He updated the post last in April 2018 so keep in mind that these stats could have changed in the meantime. The post is also linked in the description. Easily the best method of farming exotics is by playing legendary missions and heroic incursions. Legendaries and heroics have exotic caches as part of their rewards, guaranteeing you an exotic. With 7 legendary missions and 4 incursions you have 11 guaranteed exotics per week, if you're willing to grind for it. It's set to a weekly timer but you can repeat this for every character you have for a total of 44 guaranteed exotics per week. That will take some time though. Besides the legendaries and heroics, another guaranteed method is completing the three weekly assignments. These require you to complete a series of objectives, depending on the assignment. The weekly assignment requires you to eliminate 40 NPCs from a certain faction, to complete a specific crafting challenge, to eliminate another 40 NPCs in the dark zone, and to complete 10 missions. The latter should already be progressed by completing the legendaries and heroics. The second weekly is the survival assignment, which always requires you to earn 20,000 points in survival. This equates to 2 or 3 survival runs. And the third weekly is the underground assignment, requiring you to complete 6 daily underground operations, a specific elimination challenge, a 3 phase 5 directives hard mission and to collect 20 directive intel. Each of these will reward you with a weekly assignment cache, which guarantees an exotic as well. Of course, these last two assignments require you to have either the survival and or the underground DLC or the season pass. The drop chance significantly lowers for the third method which is killing hunters, named enemies and drone couriers. Hunters have a 12% chance to drop an exotic. They can be found at the end of legendary survival runs and underground runs. There is one exception where the hunter from legendaries have a 100% drop chance. Named enemies drop exotics at a 6% chance. In the open world named enemies can be found in the underground, light zone, dark zone and west side pier. While technically not a part of the open world, named enemies in the underground have a 9% chance to drop exotic, which is a little bit higher than in the other areas. The light zone is the open world outside of the dark zone and west side pier. 15 named enemies spawn in specific locations on the map, each one having a drop chance of 6%. Their respawn timer is 4 hours, which usually makes it an effective way to start and end your session. 
I created a video on it which is linked in the description. The dark zone allows you to farm named enemies, each having a drop chance of 5%. They can be found at landmarks and during contamination events. The Westside Pier spawns named enemies and courier drones as part of the Westside Pier assignments. The named enemies have a drop chance of 1%, which is significantly lower than the other areas, where the courier drones have a 3% chance to drop exotics. But the missions with the courier drones included don't drop as often and they're quite hard to complete. Supply drops are another way of earning exotics. There are two types of drops, Season Pass and Dark Zone Supply Drops. However, the first hasn't been confirmed to drop exotics. Dark Zone Supply Drops have a chance of 2% to drop either the Thompson M1928 or the Tommy Gun. The sixth and final method, if you can call it a method even, is farming caches. There are many different variants of set caches, each with different requirements and drop chances. In terms of caches, your best bets are the resistance tier and the resistance reward caches. Resistance tier caches are rewarded upon completing 5 waves in resistance. Although the tiers progress, the drop chance for exotics remains at 25%. Resistance reward caches can be unlocked by spending your shade deck on the reward grade in resistance. Each cache having a drop chance of 15% for an exotic. On top of that they are shareable, meaning trading with your group members is a possibility. Global event superior caches, sadly only available during global events, reward you with a 15% drop chance for exotics. And proficiency, survival, underground, last stand and skirmish caches have a drop rate of 1-3%. Finally, the dark zone sealed cache and manhunt cache have a 1% drop chance, where the gear set cache also has a 1% drop chance. But it can be purchased from the special equipment vendor. Although this last way is not necessarily a method on its own, there are certain missions that have higher drop chances for specific exotics and I feel like I should mention those. We already mentioned the Thompson M1928 and the Tommy Gun. The Urban MDR and Showstopper have a 1% drop chance for every mission. The Warlord, Golden Rhino, Medfat and Damascus respectively have a 5% drop chance for Falcon Lost, Dragon's Nest, Clear Sky and Stolen Signal. Bliss's Holster from General Assembly, Bear's Bulletproof Vest from Lexington Event Center, Pharaoh's Oxygen Mask from Napalm Production Site and the Shortbow Knee Pads from the Medicine Field Hospital all have a 1% chance to drop from their corresponding missions. The Caduceus, Tenebri and MC Skull Gloves have a 3% drop chance from resistance named enemies as well as drone couriers. And a final pair of exotics to have a specific drop chance are the healer and air submachine guns, each having a 1% drop chance from HVT's named enemies. Those were 5 methods summing up every way to get an exotic. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed or used the guide I would like to ask you to like or dislike, share, subscribe and click the notification bell to become part of the Masterminds HD community and of the notification squad of course. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter for daily updates and join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that revolves around Tom Clancy's Division 1 and 2. Both links are in the description. Visit my Patreon page through the link in the description if you're interested in a sprite sheet on how to earn exotics with the drop chances included. Usually these are for my patrons only, but I will make this one public so everybody can download it. To end the video, I have two questions for you. What exotics do you still need to collect and what is your favorite exotic weapon and gear piece? Leave your answer in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. I'll talk to you in the next video on Discord or on Twitter. Peace out.